Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Paul's Cinema Picks of the Week. I am your host, Bradford's film enthusiast, Paul Westbrook. And believe it or not, this is our 94th episode that we're doing today. In fact, in six episodes, we'll be reaching the milestone 100th episode. What will we be doing on that show? We're not saying yet. We just, uh, we're going through little bits of brainstorming and finding out what we can do and go from there. And um, today, we're going to be discussing drive-ins, like drive-in movies. Now, who here has been to the drive-in before? Have you been, sis? Nope. Well, my sister has never been to a drive-in theater, but I have, actually. In fact, I've been to two of them, which were here in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. We were at the uh, Sunset Drive-In, which is out on um, the road going towards Burford, Ontario, near the Brantford Airport. <clears throat> and that was always a lot of fun to go to. And then on Powerland Road, which is out near Walmart, at the time it was Wulco, it was called the Breeze's Drive-In. And at the Breeze... It was uh, really nice there, too, because um, today it's a housing development. Well, there's a lot of houses, sub suburban housing and that, but at the time, it was uh, it was the drive-in, and then you'd uh, go in there with all your friends and enjoy a movie, or you'd go to the sunset. So you had a choice of two. Yes, and um, today, I brought some drive-in-related DVDs. Now, there were some DVDs I did discuss before on a previous episode, which were like 50 movies. So, I had a uh, Drive-In Cult Classics and the uh, Drive-In uh, Movie Madness, or whatever it was called. And um, it had some of the Drive-In movies. These, these ones here concentrate more on the theme of the Drive-In, which I'll explain as we go along. So, I'll get to it right now. going to start here with uh, Drive-In Madness. Now, with this here is a documentary on the phenomenon of the drive-in. It had some clips from the movies, too. Like, you get stuff like uh, Blood Monsters, Naughty Sewers, Bo Bobby Hatch, Satan Sadists, and many more. And, of course, driving classics like Night of the Living Dead. And you get an interview with uh, various people that are related to the phenomenon of the drive-in. Like, you get George Romero, Tom Savini... You get um, Lenny Quigley and Forrest Ackerman, just to name a few. So, a documentary about the drive-ins. And for those who aren't familiar with drive-ins, this is a perfect way to start off. So, I call it like a starting point DVD. So, that way you'll be able to uh, get the idea about the phenomenon of the drive-in, why people liked it so much why it played all these cheesy movies and don't let anybody ever tell you that a movie is overly cheesy because it can be a lot of fun so I would definitely get this secondly I got two here from a company called Retromedia's Drive-In Theater now on the left on my left you got Curse of the Vampires and on the right you got The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues and I might have also discussed, might have discussed some of these previously, but for those who aren't familiar with it, yes, um, these are two movies that were popularly played at drive-ins during the, uh, the 60s and the 70s. And I didn't really elaborate on a lot of the um, special features on this, but besides that, you get vintage drive-in spots, which are like your drive-in commercials, you know, your ads about the food and stuff. You get your um, trailers, which are good. You get driving antics with Fred, Fred Olin Ray, and um, he's the one that is actually the main host of this. And Miss Kim, she's one of the uh, various uh, ladies that he just happens to have on the show. And you get here in this one, Curse of the Vampires. It's uh, Filipino bloodshed at its most incestuous. As a bunch of kids try to keep their vampire mom, vampire mom in chains, and the thing I have to explain about this movie, and like it says, it's filmed in the real tombs of horror. No, it's not. That's a marketing campaign just to get you to buy the film. And the one thing that a lot of people said they found very odd about this movie is that 
You know how in most vampire movies they uh, don't reflect the mirrors, right, Lisa? Yep. In this one, for some reason, the filmmaker, actually, he was Filipino and uh, stuff, but anyway, in the uh, movie, the vampires actually show up in mirrors, and it's like, what the heck is going on here? Says, You're not supposed to do that. That kind of goes against the whole uh, grain of filming a vampire movie, but in this one it is, but just the same. It's very good to watch. It's... um. If you like cheesy type vampire movies, the ones with the uh, yes, it also has the uh, crackling or the lines in the uh, film, like uh, what you would in one of the old films. So it's like it's it was made to be that way, just like you would watch a movie when you were a kid, and you've probably seen this. And uh, yeah, Retro Media Entertainment Incorporated, they came up with this and. It was perfect for the drive-in thing, so I thought I'd bring it today. So if you like vampires, check out Curse of the Vampires. From the same company here, Virtual Media, you have Freezing Horror as a Living Nightmare. Strikes from the Depths of the Seas. The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Which um, some people are confused with the movie called Creature from the Haunted Sea, which I also have. That's the uh, famous monster with the golf ball eyes. And was directed by, uh, it was a Roger Corman film. A very early Roger Corman film. This one's sort of the same deal. That you got a blistering tale of passion, betrayal, and radiation as Kent Taylor probes the mystery of the mutated monster that lives a whole 10,000 leagues under the sea. And here you get, once again, your drive-in antics. You get your original theatrical trailer, vintage Drive-in intermission spot. I love those. Everybody, who doesn't love an intermission spot? Something that makes you want to go for your drink or go for a hamburger or a hot dog or french fries, pizza, whatever. It's uh, it's another one of these uh, drive-in movies, which are very rare to find. I had to really dig deep and look hard at some of these uh, stores before I could even come up with either Curse of the Vampires or The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues, but... Sets like this are few and hard to come by, so when you get them, make sure you get them and put them in a section on the shelf that's devoted to drive-ins. Anyway, that was Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Here, next, we have a different one. It's like a different company. It's called uh, Drive-In Discs, and this is Volume 1. It has The Screaming Skull, and that movie actually spooked me as a kid. And the second one here, you have the Attack of the Giant Leeches. Now, I don't know how many people would play over for a movie about giant leeches, or for that matter, Screaming Skulls, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yes, and there was a, in this one, it says here, I'm reading on the package here, we guarantee to... Trying to figure out here. It's on this. Basically, it's an insurance against dying of fright when watching the movie. So it's uh, sort of a, a gimmick thing again to get you to watch the film. And of course, that we all survived because it was all just gimmick. And on this one, you get a sound a sound capacity called Distorto, and it actually gives you what the um, what the DVD what the movies would sound like if you were playing them at a drive-in. And you get your intermission reels, like you always get. You get cartoons on this one, and you get a countdown. You get a clock countdown, and you get some cartoons to go with it, because, uh, you know, who doesn't like cartoons? And they would play a lot of cartoons at the drive-in before the main movie. So for a full drive-in experience, you can't go wrong. This one actually cost me only $3, believe it or not. So you can't go wrong with that. And again, here's uh, Volume 3. I didn't get Volume 2. I was able to find Volume 3. And this one here, you have I Bury the Living with Richard Boone in a very young role. And The Hand. And The Hand, both very spooky. And like the uh, Screaming Skull one, you also get your uh, coming attractions. You get your intermission reels and you get your cartoons. And I usually like to play these on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evenings. Usually uh, making hot dogs and hamburgers because you get the full driving experience of it. And of course you get, you get the popcorn, the front cover looks really good. You see you got your movies here, you got your popcorn and candies or 
whatever, and this one actually has the uh, advertisement for Toddy. Toddy was a very uh, well-known uh, chocolate drink at that time. And, of course, this one here has the uh, kid with a hot dog. I don't know if you can see that or kind not. Of. Yeah, I'll turn it around just so my sister can see it there. You got the kid there with the hot dog. That was a that was a popular cartoon of the time, a cartoon intermission. So um, I remember seeing that on Grease. Yes, and on time. Driving Classics, which was a channel at the time, they actually played a lot of these films. Excuse me, folks. I just have to take a quick drink. Host gets thirsty too. Ooh. I'm guessing these are from a driving. Yes. Yeah, my sister has this thing she might show you on the camera there. It says, not many actually know what this is. And it's kind of sad because it's like a nostalgia that's no longer in existence, you know. I had to take a guess of what it was. Like my friend Ron, Ron and Christina. Yes, Ron, there's a name drop, so you want to listen to this. Ron LeBlanc and Christina usually go to a lot of drive-ins. They go to one in uh, Ancaster. They go to... Um, they go to the one in uh, Oakville, I believe it is, in Ontario, and they go to Woodstock as well. So, yeah, it's still keeping the drive-in tradition alive. And, yeah, my sister said she saw the cartoon thing on uh, Greece, which Greece actually had uh, one scene where they all go to a drive-in theater. Mm -hmm. So um, you got the movie Grease there, too. Finally, the final one I got for today, Starlight Drive-In Theater. And a little, these films might be a little risque, not overly risque, so they don't need a rated R rating on this one. But one says, The Pom Pom Girls, how can anyone forget the girls who really turned us on? The Pom Pom Girls, and you got the van. Bobby couldn't make it till we went fun trucking. Yep, so uh, these are more, like, not porn, they're not porn, but they're adult, more close to the adult, adolescent, adult-oriented type films. And Crown International Pictures, which was actually a film distribution company which distributed a lot of the drive-in type movies, yeah, they were responsible for these here. And you get classic cartoons, you get movie previews, and classic drive-in concession commercials, which I love in most of my drive-in ones. I even got that in my 50 movie set on some of the discs where you actually uh, get to you get to do the uh, driving commercials, you get your intermission and all the fun stuff. All the stuff that makes you relive being at the drive-in. So I hope I was able to um, interest, in you, interest you in some of these. If you want to go to the video stores, or well not video stores anymore so much, you want to go to the the pawn shops like Value Village or B Goes On, which is a specialty store here in Brantford, there's a uh, name pop for you. They sell a lot of the uh, the older movies there, too. So I would also recommend going to that place as well. So that's a little look at uh, the drive-in and the drive-in theater. hope I was able to inform you with a little history on it as well, a little histrionics on the uh, drive-in theater and... Um, of course, like I said, this is Paul Westbrook reminding you to like and subscribe to the channel. Send your uh, comments underneath the video. We hope you can get some likes, and we definitely like to have comments because can't really determine how we like how they liked it or not without the comments. So we need the comments. And we're also going to mention that after the show, we're going to be doing like a a live thing on Facebook like a live broadcast where you can sit and talk to us. I like to call it fan, Film Fan Forum. Film Fan Forum. I think that's the official name I should give it. Film Fan Forum, where you can talk to us, say hi, and uh, tell us if you liked the show today, if you checked out the shows. Hopefully you did, because uh, that's part of it. I want you to see the show, and uh, hope you enjoy it. And yes. I'm, remind, I'm reminding you, as I always do, that I'll be seeing you at the movies. Goodbye for now.